um if they ask you what do you look for in a partner do not answer that question just politely say hey i'll ask that question on our fifth or sixth date because i want to get to know you for who you are not for who you think i want you to be do not give that away on the first date Hey you guys, it's Seiko Kaori, the Manifesting Goddess, and welcome back to another episode of Seiko's Intuition. And on today's episode, I am going to be answering your questions and giving you guys advice from the Not Gonna Lie app. So if you're interested in this video, stay tuned. So the first question is, what are five things that you did in your last relationship that you won't do in your new relationship? And the first thing is going to be, I am not ignoring red flags. I don't care how far you are. I don't care how long I've been single. I am not ignoring red flags. Second is going to be, my boundaries are my boundaries. I am not changing them for no one. If, if you have a problem with my boundaries, then you are just not the person for me. Third is my next relationship is going to be private, not a secret, but it's going to be private. You guys are not going to know what's going on in that relationship. I'm not going to be all those social media with this person. You, pro you guys probably won't even see this person's face until we are at least six months to a year. And even then, I may not even show their face. You might get a little arm, a little picture with their back turned, you know the bare minimum um the next thing is going to be not being stuck up underneath that person in my last relationship i didn't have my own life so my life surrounded around that person so i want to have my own life i want to have my own identity my own everything that way i don't get lost in that person or lost in the relationship and fifth is going to be honesty the first time that i catch you lying that is it i don't care if the lie is big or small that is a non-negotiable for me catching you in a lie that's it next question so the next question is how will you know when you found the one um besides looks and how that person will make me feel. I ask God or the universe that within our talking phase, like the getting to know each other, the going on dates within that phase, this person has to play a specific song. And of course, I'm not gonna tell you guys a song, but let's just say it's Beyonce Dangerously in Love. In the time that we're dating, whether that's three months, four months, six months, whatever, they have to just genuinely and naturally play this song. It don't matter if they send me the song. It don't matter if they play it and we're in the car or if we're in a restaurant and the song comes on and they know the words. I just have to hear this song when I'm around this person or this person has to bring up the song or sing the song. So that is how I'm going to know. It's a specific song. I know it sounds crazy, but <laughs> and besides looks, you know, how tall the person is, the features that I want, how that person is going to make me feel, but I'm going to know. Trust me. The third question is, any do's or don'ts for dating? Oh, child, I haven't dated in years. Um, I would say get to know the person for who they genuinely are, not all that 3D and materialistic stuff. Get to know their values, get to know their beliefs, get to know their principles. Do they have morals? Um, what kind of family do they want? Uh, what's their relationship with their family? That's also gonna tell you a lot. Um, and ask questions to where you can get to know who they are on a deeper level, not just surface level. All that, oh, what's your favorite color? What's your zodiac sign? What's your favorite movie? Cut all of that out. Do you like saving? Are you into stocks? Um, if they ask you, what do you look for in a partner? Do not answer that question. Just politely say, 
okay i'll ask that question on our fifth or sixth date because i want to get to know you for who you are not for who you think i want you to be do not give that away on the first date don't go don't start naming oh i want somebody to open the door for me somebody's a gentleman somebody that's freaky somebody that's honest and does this and does that you're pretty much giving them the blueprint to bag you no let it be genuine and natural let that person be for you because they are for you not because you gave them the whole blueprint on how to make you happy or how to get in a relationship with you the next question is why have you been single for so long are you afraid of getting hurt and I've been single because I want to love somebody with my heart and not with my trauma, with my pain, with my insecurities. I want to be so happy and engulfed in my own life that anybody who comes into my life will be a add-on. I'm just energetically materialistically not where I want to be as far as having a relationship energetically I'm still healing myself energetically I'm still working on myself and reprogramming myself and you know what I'm saying digging into my childhood trauma so I can't tell somebody how to love me when I'm still learning how to love me I don't know I'm just not in a rush this is the first time in a long time where I am not pressed for a relationship. I'm not trying to get back with an ex or force a relationship to work so I'm not lonely or so I feel like I have a purpose. It feels good being by myself. And I'm human, like I said, I have my moments where I want to hug or a kiss or to go on a date or whatever the lovey-dovey stuff is. But I genuinely think about being in a relationship and I am not ready. Like having to text somebody, having to go out on dates, having to spend money on other people. I'm trying to save and build my business. It's just too much that I'm trying to do for me that I probably would not even have time for that person. So I'm just not in a rush. I thought this year that would have changed, but I think next year I will be ready to not even get into a relationship to start dating. I have not even dated anybody. Like, oh my gosh. I'm going to be so awkward when I go on my first date. Oh my gosh. And the am I afraid to get hurt again part? I mean, nobody wants to get hurt. But it's not a fear of mine. I'm not single because I'm afraid of getting hurt. My intuition and my discernment has gotten to a point where I can pretty much seek out the bullshit. I also don't ignore red flags anymore. People have to realize that in relationships, we get hurt because we have ignored the red flags. Red flags are signs from God like, hey, this person is toxic. Hey, this person is not healthy. Hey, this person is not healed. This is not going to end well. We choose to ignore the red flags, see what we want to see. So God has no choice but to make that person hurt us. Don't ignore the red flags. Stay strong in your boundaries. Um, there's no reason for me to be afraid of getting hurt. Now, I'm not saying that my next relationship is going to be my wife. I'm not saying this. I don't want nobody to be like, oh, Seiko's been healing for four or five years and then she gets into a relationship and it doesn't work out. I don't know if our next relationship is going to work out. It may be the one. I may get married to this person or I may just date this person and move on to the next person. You guys have to realize that I've been single for a few years, not in a relationship. So there may be some lessons and things that I still need to learn when it comes to love. And that's okay. Or I could have healed and learned so much that I can go into this relationship and it'd be easy breezy. Who knows? I haven't been triggered as far as relationship. I haven't, you know what I'm saying, had to be tested. So I'm not saying my next relationship is going to be the one. But I'm definitely not afraid of getting hurt anymore. The next question was, is being single a choice for you? 
if so why and i kind of just answered that question in the last one yes it's absolutely a choice and why i am just not ready physically mentally spiritually emotionally i am still loving seiko and working on seiko and i can't have somebody in my life right now because it would be a distraction and i'm just worried about me right now y'all every i don't know why everybody want to see me in a relationship i i know y'all like girl you haven't dated anybody since 2019 that's like four or five years i get it trust me y'all but god is for me to be single that long intentionally single god is bringing me somebody special and I don't know if I am over healing or becoming overly independent or overly focused. I don't know. I'm just trying to be the best me that I can be so that when this person does come into my life, I don't self-sabotage. I have been manifesting this person since 2019. And I have not folded. I have not dated nobody. I have not gotten into a relationship strictly manifesting this specific person and they are special do you hear me they are heaven sent so i just want to make sure i am on the same level as them i am just as healed as they are i have no connections to my past i just want to make sure i am ready that's it so the next question is, how did you forgive your ex so easily? It has been months for me and it feels like the first day all over again. It still hurts. Um, I'm glad that it looked easy. It wasn't easy at all. It was not easy at all. Um, I can't really say how I forgave my ex because it's different components. It's different things that I did. Um, changing the story, forgiving myself for ignoring the red flags, for ignoring the signs, for going back, for not knowing my worth, forgiving that person because for somebody to hurt you at the extent that I was hurt, that person has to be hurting themselves. You can only hurt somebody if you are hurting yourself. So I just changed my perspective. Instead of seeing that person as a villain, I started to see them as a victim. Like, damn, this person can't give me something that they don't even have inside of them. Somebody can only love you at the capacity of which they love themselves. And I had to realize that that person doesn't love themselves. They want love. They want to take love. They need love. They can't give me something that they're trying to get. So you just got to change your perspective. Like I said, change the victim mindset. Change the story. Um, find your purpose, your passion. Not distract your mind, but change your focus to something more positive. Cut off all ties. Stop hanging with their friends. Stop hanging with their family. Um, if you guys use, if you guys used to live together, throw away all their stuff, anything that reminds you of them, out of sight, out of mind, and heal. I have over forty something videos teaching you guys how to move on from your ex, how to heal from your ex, why you aren't healing from your ex, so many different tips and tricks. So, just watch all my videos. So the last question is: My partner doesn't want to make it official but once the perks of a relationship, should I keep talking to them? My partner doesn't want to make it official. So they're not your partner. So a person that you're talking to doesn't want to make it official, but they want the perks of the relationships. Should you continue to talk to them? I'm gonna say no. And it's not worth it. Um, and I'm saying that because you're going to get attached and you're going to continue to be available. You're going to continue to be intimate with them. And then they get what they want, which is a dating simulation, 
without any emotional responsibility. That's all that it is. They just want the perks of having you, which is probably sex, which is probably time spent, um, dates, going out, but they don't want the emotional responsibility of making sure you're okay, of not cheating or not lying. They can do what they want. And then the moment you say, I don't like that, or you shouldn't be doing that, they're gonna look you right in your face and they're gonna tell you, well, we're not in a relationship. So if I were you, I wouldn't hold on to them. You gotta stop showing people that you will stay through whatever because they're going to put you through whatever. But that is the end of the Q&A. Thank you guys for the people who actually participated. I am Seiko Kaori, the Manifesting Goddess. And if you resonate with what I say, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys on Tuesday. Bye.